Bem, boa tarde a todos novamente. Good afternoon, everyone, once again. The public earnings call is on a webinar format where participants have their mics and videos off. We'll start off with the presentation of the earnings for our year and quarter, and then we'll provide some time for Q&A as well. So questions can be submitted through the Q&A on the chat, or we can also open up your mic. And this uh, meeting is also having simultaneous translation into English to select this option. And the webinar will be recorded and provided in both languages on our IR website. Let me just share the presentation. One second. During this call, we'll have simultaneous translation available. Please select the language interpretation icon we globe on the bottom of your screen or the more option when using a phone, iPad device and choose English to activate for those that want to, to watch the webinar in English. So as we enter the earnings for the second quarter of 23, I'll quickly go over the highlights so that we have time for discussion and Q&A. So in the last 12 months, we ended with an operational net revenue of 1 billion 651 million. This is 1.9% lower than the 12 month period in 2022. Um, and in the last 12 months, we had a net income of 493 million. 37.9% higher compared to the uh, same 12 month period in 2022. The adjusted EBITDA was 501,874,000, that was 9.7% lower than the 12 month period before. And we invested in the Gaia platform till the end of the second quarter, uh, a total of 862,339,500. And we'll get into more details about these projects. Our leverage position is at 1.95. We ended the quarter with 1.95 times, uh, a bit higher than the last quarter due to the Gaia platform investments and the ROIC in the last 12 months was 20.7%. The cost of debt in the last 12 months was 13.9%. When we get into the specific results in this quarter, we ended up with a net Operational revenue of 394,470,000, million, 8% lower than the second quarter last year. And adjusted EBITDA of 117 million and 60,000, 19.2% lower compared to the same period in 22. And a net income of 228,746,000, 170.3% higher than the second quarter in 2022. This is mainly due to the recognition of the Peace Scoping's tax credits on uh, scraps that Ojivan can discuss as well and the impacts that this had in our um, net income. So the recurring income would be 167 million, but we had an impact of 161 million. And investments a total of 94 million 859 uh, at the Gaia platform in the quarter. Yeah, so this um, process uh, with this lawsuit for the tax credits, uh, has been going on for quite a while and the values go all the way back to June 2010. These were uh, credits on Peace Scoping's taxes that we had a, a lawsuit. And now in the second quarter, we finally had the uh, final sentence on this lawsuit and the total of amount is 231 million rise. And uh, of course, net after taxes and uh, lawyer fees that represented 161 million. And we hope to monetize this with other processes so that we can convert this into effective cash. And another interesting point is that from now on, we'll also start taking on the Peace Coffins credit uh, re in a recurring manner, which means 1,600,000 per month due to the prices of the scraps that we currently have. So 1.6 million in our overall EBITDA uh, results due to this tax credit. So when we get into the revenue and we look at the annual comparison, we're 8% lower. So the second quarter was a quarter that was very challenging for our business. We noticed that there was a drop in the economic activities overall in Brazil and also an impact in the exports, mainly due to the leftover paper in the overall world, which ended up impacting the internal market and exports as well. 
and uh, the impacts of the dollars uh, in our exports, which impacts uh, the revenue when it comes to the previous period. So it's 8% lower and with an exports of 16.6%. Um, and in the first quarter, and in this quarter going down 3.1% uh, uh, compared to the first quarter with 3.4% exports and a total revenue of 394 million. The EBITDA had a drop that was significant compared to the second quarter last year, 19.2% and 87 compared to the first quarter. So we had a quarter with 116 million uh, and this was also impacted by the economic moment that's more challenging that we went through in the second quarter. The net income uh, had a non-recurring impact of 161 million due to this lawsuit for tax credits and the ordinary profit or net income would be 67 million. So there would be a slight drop of 20% compared to the second quarter last year. But due to this impact, the net income was uh, very significant of 170% and 175% compared to the first quarter of 23. So when we notice the volume of sales in the market, that's disclosed by Impapel, we had a significant physical increase of 0.2% compared to the same quarter last year, basically stable. And in regards to the first quarter, an increase of 3.9%, and this is in tons. So in square meters, an evolution of 0.8% compared to the second quarter and 3.4% compared to the first quarter this year. So our performance is very similar, uh, a little worse than the overall market due to our emphasis on profitability and uh, profitability management in our overall portfolio. So we had a loss of 3.3% uh, compared to the second quarter of last year. And we have evolved 1.4% compared to the first quarter. In square meters, 5.5% less than what we had in the second quarter last year, and an evolution of 1.4% compared to the first quarter of 23. So the average prices had a drop of 1.2% compared to the second quarter of 22, and 2.2% compared to the first quarter. So this drop in prices uh, is mainly due to the drop in scrap price, the price has evolved significantly in the last three years, especially. And now with this drop significantly in scraps, naturally there's gonna be pressure to um, renegotiate some accounts. And we've done this uh, very carefully. So we wanna give extra value to profitability. Although prices may drop, the profitability per ton has been stable. And this is due to the drop in the scraps and also due to adjustments in some costs we had that had a very important uh, inflation impact. And so at this moment, we start renegotiating some of these costs due to the dollar and the overall market with a smaller demand. So the price in square meters went up 1.3% and it dropped 2.3 uh, compared to the first quarter. When we look at uh, the overall paper business, which is where we sell to the market. When it comes to volumes, we had a drop of 10.6% compared to last year. In the flexible uh, packaging, we went from 25,000 to 22,000. Um, and this is mainly due to the moment in the market and the challenges for sales in the internal market and also in the exports. So uh, where we also had about um, two months without exports to Argentina, which is a very important market for us due to the currency issues we had in the country. And we uh, recovered some of the sales uh, to Argentina, but this of course impacted the volume of the overall quarter. So 1.5% lower than the first quarter of 23. And in uh, rigid uh, or stiff uh, packages, we reduced our sales to 6,492 in the first quarter. It was pretty much stable on the second quarter. And that's due to the fact that we were using more paper in our units uh, 
considering the paper from third parties. Prices evolved significantly in regards to the second quarter of 2022. We were able to uh, transfer all of the uh, increase in prices that we were expecting for this year. In our paper, é muito em função do dólar, né? porque aqui nós estamos fazendo é, preços de todos os papéis, e também é, algum impacto de volume em algumas linhas. Né? Mas é, no mercado interno, principalmente os papéis... And in the internal market, especially for uh, thinner paper, it really doesn't make sense, and we haven't felt such an impact. There's actually been pretty good evolution compared to last year. So this drop in prices is mainly due to the exports and the dollar that is, um, has less value than last year. So the average price of these uh, rigid packaging had a drop that was a little greater, 4% compared to the first quarter, and 3.7% compared to this quarter of 22. With a price dropping, um, the recycled papers, especially like the pulp and the test line uh, that we sell in the market, had a drop uh, in line with the price of the scraps that dropped also. So the scraps had a significant drop um, in the last year, 15.1%, closer to the average historically that were lower, and they dropped 9.3% compared to the first quarter. So in our case, the drop was a little greater, 15.7% in the year, and 8% compared to the first quarter of 23. So these scraps uh, are really uh, offsetting part of the losses in profitability due to the slight drop in prices. And we've been managing this very strictly, mainly due to this uh, market that has less demand. So we actually lost a bit of the market share in certain months due to the fact that we were uh, preferring the maintenance of the prices because we know that in the second semester, we always have a dynamic uh, volume that's a little more favorable and um, the prices are sustained more uh, during the two last quarters in the year. So the Rawson business has been um, a very challenging business in the last two years, especially. And most of the volumes of sales go to Asia, especially China. And with the interruptions of activities due to COVID, volumes dropped a lot, which of course led to a drop in vol in prices. So recovering this business really depends on the recovery of the economic activities um, in a more intense manner in Europe and in China. And we had a drop in volumes of 15.2% and 9.9%. And, and the prices of course were impacted by the demand that was lower, but also by the dollar with a drop of 37% compared to the second quarter last year and 9.1 compared to the first quarter of 2023. And turpentine also had a significant impact, 42% drop uh, in dollars and uh, vo volume as well. And in regards to the first quarter, 18.3% drop. So this business has been very, very challenging. It's a business that has more volatility, of course, uh, when it comes to worldwide commodities. And we suffer a lot when there is a drop in demand, especially in China and in Europe. And when we take a look at our leverage position, it went to 1.95 due to the acceleration of the investments in the Gaia platform in this semester. And we've evolved um, in two years from 0 0.78 to 1.95. And we didn't capture most of the returns yet in the investments of the Gaia platform. So we're going to discuss this up ahead, but most of the projects are in the final phases, the payments also, and the uh, arrival of these returns will start taking place um, gradually throughout this second quarter. And we ended up with a gross debt of 1,843,000 and a balance in the uh, and a, a net um, debt of 981 million. 100% in national currency, 86% in the long term, and 14% in the short term. Um, so our ROIC also had a drop in the last quarters, mainly due to the new investments also that have been going on and that still have not been captured. Um, 
with these returns that it will start becoming more effective now. So we probably will be capturing some return on uh, re invested capital. It's a little greater with the return of the uh, Gaia platform projects and the average cost of debt at 9.2% uh, in the last 12 months. So the buyback program for 2022 uh, is, remains and we've already performed 66.40% of the uh, stock that could be repurchased or bought back. And we kept the buyback program uh, during this period because we understand that these um, stock uh, don't represent the intrinsic value of the company. So we understand that it's a wonderful investment for the company to have these buyback programs and an important indication also that we understand the that the value of this share does not capture the intrinsic value of the company at the moment when we look at the payment of dividends we can see that it was uh in the last four quarters we had important payments for dividends uh 0 0.95 in the third quarter 0 0 in, in the fourth quarter 0 0.87 in the first quarter. And due to this lawsuit uh, with Peace Coffee tax credits. And so the payment in the last year of 181 million uh, with dividend yield of 11.2%, which was very significant besides, of course, the value of the shares. So when we look at the Gaia platform, we can see there's 10 projects that um, are part of this cycle of investments, which includes the first and second cycle. But of course, it's a, cycle, it's a set of projects that intend to improve the competitiveness in the company at the current at Eat Any platform. So we don't have projects to increase our capacity uh, that are very relevant because the initial focus was to have gains in competition, cost reduction, and all of these are going to be captured in the next quarters. So when we take a look at the gross investments um, updated, we can see that there were some deviations in regards to the initial values that were expected. And we should be ending with 1 billion and 82 million in the Gaia platform without a clear vision of the projects to uh, restart uh, the two hydropower plants that we have here due to the licensing projects process that has required a lot more time than what we initially expected because besides the specific licensing for each of these hydropower plants, we also need to perform the licensing of the river basin as a whole. And this is a new requirement from the environmental agencies, which requires more time as you must monitor some uh, fauna and flora species during one year in the four seasons. And this, of course, requires uh, a longer period for the licensing, but this has been progressing well, and we should be starting these projects in mid next year. When we talk about the projects um, from each project individually, we can see that the most imp important in this cycle as the main point, we have the boiler. Uh, and we also had a deviation in the original budget of 63 uh, million, which is mostly related to COVID. And we had that peak of COVID in the beginning of last year with Omicron. And we had to stop our uh, activities for almost a month, which made us have some delays. And with this, of course, some neg renegotiation in prices and uh, an environment that was super inflated, which ended up bringing some challenges that we had to be able to keep the uh, project budget in line with what had been approved initially. So this 63 million is the investment in the second quarter. Yes, exactly, sorry for that. Uh, so it was about, yeah, it's gonna be a little more, maybe 80, thank you, Jivan, so 88 million, sorry. Um, thanks for the correction. And then Gaia 2, we have the updated investments of 150 and the investments of 118 net. And then the gross investments um, still at the end of the project in the second quarter and the gross investments of 130. So we were actually below the investments initially forecasted for Gaia 2. Then uh, Machine 2, we were also below uh, 66 million gross and 53 million net and we invested only 6 million reais in the second quarter and 59 million 
from the accumulated gross investments. So this is also complete. And the project that had some deviations was the Gaia One project. And then the other projects are smaller that are basically um, at the original values that had been approved by the board. And some, of course, below the original budget. When we look at the timeline and schedule for Gaia One, we have very few um, initiatives that should be starting off in the month of August. And then we're just gonna get into the performance curve for the boiler and the other um, stations uh, in the factory that were modified. But till the end of this year, we should have our learning curve um, in line with our expectations for the project. And the expansion of Embalaje in Santa Catarina was also complete. And here you have the capturing of the returns in line with the growth curves we expected. We're being super careful at this moment with this increase of capacity in Santa Catarina to avoid drops in prices due to the fact that the demand is not so strong in this first semester of the year. And in the second semester, once we have a little more demand evolved, uh, we should be more aggressive as we search for volumes in the market. And then uh, the refurbishing of machine two, which is mainly focused on a pack paper for packages. We've completed this investment and the volumes are a lot higher than what we expected for this moment in the project. And volumes also have been very positive, especially in the last month. Uh, considering the recovery of retail with um, a perspective for towards Christmas and Black Friday, where you have more consumption of this kind of paper. So this, um, of course, increases the production of the machine by about 30% compared to the previous one. And this should also be reaching the volumes that we expected in the project. Then Gaia 6, um, which is this project for... Uh, all of the plants in the 4.0 industry. It's moving along very well. We should complete this investment by the first quarter last next year and the expansion of the ET and the new uh, printer as well, which is already operating well at the Indaya Tuba unit and then automation also uh, of the intermediate stock in Indaya Tuba, which is also in this phase for um, installation. And we should have this complete by the second semester and then we're going to get into the performance curve and so then you have the new printer we've purchased also for the india for the santa catarina unit sorry was already acquired and will be delivered in the first semester of 2025 so it's a japanese machine and so here you have all of the physical execution uh, the three first projects have been practically complete the uh, Repotentialization has been postponed for the next year. And the other projects are also in a very advanced phase. Um, so in this quarter, we had some important recognition. We were among the best uh, ESG companies from the Izami magazine. We were also recognized as the company that most um, includes people in our diversity uh, program in the EPSIS uh, research. We were the best company in the sector. We also had um, Innovative Workplace in Brazil, um, MIT SEAL, uh, that started off from this year onwards. And we already joined the first list of companies that are considered um, great places for innovation. And we were among the best innovations in the south of Brazil. And then here you have our investor relations team, Ojivan leading all of the group and Andrea also with our, as our investor relations director, Mari, Tulu, Daniela, these are everyone that's uh, more focused on uh, investor relations than invest in the financial area of Marcos and Emmanuel. And in new business, we also have support with Giovanna. So this is the team that's available to help investors and clarify any questions. So, they're on standby to support you and provide the best level of service to our investors. And then uh, I would like to now begin our Q&A session. Yes, um, great. So you can submit your questions on chat um, or on the Q&A option. 
on Zoom. We already have a few. One is from Guilherme Nips. He's from XP. And he has two questions. The first one is that he would like to understand more about the increase in the capex of the Gaia project. We understand that part of this growth was due to cost inflation, but also partially due to a change in the scope of the project. Could you talk about this change? That would be very interesting. Thank you. And the second point is about the scenario with the price demand and um, price of packaging. What have you seen? Um, by the end of July, and what do you expect looking ahead? Um, so about the project for Gaia 1 specifically, um, because the two other ones didn't have deviations in regards to the original um, quotes, but in Gaia 1, um, first of all, we had to um, interrupt the activities during the peak of COVID in the beginning of last year. And this, of course, delayed some initiatives. And of course, uh, this required some adjustments in contracts due to these delays. And so then the second point is the inflation of last year, which was very strong in certain inputs, and this impacted the project directly. So when it comes to the increase in the scope, what happened was just a few slight adjustments, but nothing very relevant that could impact the uh, budget of the project. So what actually happened was this delay uh, due to COVID, and also the inflation last year. So Enhiki is our uh, director. He was responsible for this project. Not sure if you would like to add on to that. No, I think that's it. Not much more. Good afternoon, everyone. Well, then just about the uh, package prices, demands seem to be a little better uh, in this year, in this month of July. And we have very good expectations also for the next months. So with demands that are better, we'll have prices that are more stable. And we had lots of biddings uh, for big companies that also took advantage of this moment with a weaker demand to pressure the companies to perform some adjustments. Uh, but now this, of course, loses a bit of pace due to a stronger demand in the second semester. So in our vision, uh, in regards to prices, the first semester is always more challenging because volumes are smaller. And then uh, you have this phase. Um, uh, and then you have this season with more biddings uh, from big companies. Uh, Lindo Mar is our director. Uh, for the packaging business. Yes, that's exactly it. It's natural that there'll be an increase in demand in the second semester due to the actual seasonality. And so the expectations um, are quite stable. We already performed most of the negotiations and things are uh, have been progressing very well with uh, positive expectations. In regards to prices, it's important to highlight the prices of packaging end up being influenced by the price of the scraps in some way. So we don't, since there was a very significant drop uh, of the scraps throughout this last year, we haven't seen a replenishment or, or recovery of these prices. Now, what could happen is more stability in prices due to the demand. Um, but increases of prices with such as the margin of the recycled uh, products has been moving along very well. Uh, there's a real difficulty with transferring these prices unless uh, there's a, and this is of course not um, discarded in any way. Uh, so the papers for packaging are really at a very uh, favorable moment as you have an increase in consumption of e-commerce, substitution, um, and a substitution of plastic by paper. And this is happening a lot. This, of course, favors our business a lot when you look at this from a short, mid, and long term. And this is just to add on to the information from the Zildo with Gaia 1. The CapEx disclosed was from 2020, ever since the IPO phase, when we started implementing the project. And then we considered all of the inflation with the costs that we had, as mentioned, in the IGPM. And then the deviation out at the end was 17%. So in our understanding, it was a project that was very well managed. And the deviation was... Um, not even close to what it could have been. 
with all of the adversities we had starting off with COVID and uh, deviations also in the inflation and IGPM. So this uh, rate of return uh, of the project was also not impacted because um, the business changed. Uh, and this, of course, makes the return on investments uh, kept in line with what was initially planned. So let's move on to the next question here. Now we have a question from Caillou from BTG. How's it going, Caillou? Um, could you talk about the efforts to increase prices in the company in the second quarter? Do you see market conditions that are more favorable in the short term? Should the company be able to keep the current level of margins till the end of the year? I think that we can see maybe, uh, uh, should we imagine other deviations that are relevant in the Gaia platform? Uh, well, about prices, we have not seen the second semester having price transfers uh, unless the economic activity has significant changes till the end of the year. We shouldn't see uh, price transfers. Um, uh, but eventually, we could have a price uh, transfer anticipating a favorable market condition, uh, as we did this year with an increase in paper prices. And uh, we've completed um, this in February. So we had an increase of 13% in the internal market. And this could take place again um, if the economic activities are strong in the last quarter of the year. We could anticipate the uh, prices foreseen. But for 2023, we see more stability in prices in the second semester than in any other, than any other type of adjustment. Some possible drops should, could occur if the dollar continues to be depreciated uh, compared to the real, which is always a question mark, but apparently the dollar should be sticking around at this original level, but you never know. Um, when you talk about the dollar, any kind of expectation is subject to severe mistakes. So it's difficult to foresee, but in regards to the budget of the Gaia platform, we don't see uh, we don't imagine any more relevant deviations taking place. Actually, we should, we have negotiated even below uh, some projects and and all of them have uh, the same budget and even a little lower than what was initially expected. This actually uh, responds uh, uh, the question from William about new revisions in the uh, quotes and uh, budget for the Gaia platform project. No, we don't expect any other changes. So Evandro Ezilero says, what was the precision of the Gaia project? Sorry, what's the forecast for the Gaia project to be in full swing or full operation? Well, um, we saw the schedule and the timeline and the three main projects that have most of their uh, returns expected are ready. Um, so then we got into this curve to capture these returns. Uh, of course, due to certain variables in the market, uh, these will be captured maybe in a period that's a little longer, especially considering the new capacity for packaging in Santa Catarina, where we'll have to continue to be careful with these volumes so we don't get in the way of the market and don't cause any drop in uh, the overall market. There are challenges, of course, in this um, industry, and it's a priority market for us in Santa Catarina. So we see stability in prices and in the second semester. Then when it comes to Rossins, we also think we've reached a very low level. Um, so the Rossin, um, which is the raw material for Rossins with a uh, in line with the international prices, but we shouldn't imagine any drops that are very relevant. Well, of course, we don't have a crystal ball to give you this confirmation, but our expectations are that will keep the international prices pretty much. Um, and then when it comes to paper, it's what I mentioned previously for the paper for the overall market, when it comes to uh, stiff uh, packaging, uh, this is very much connected to the price of the scraps, but it should be kept pretty stable. And when we look at a virgin fiber prices, we should possibly perform some adjustments more towards the end of the year, um, geared towards 2024, if the market of course is more dynamic than what it's like at the moment. How's it going? We have a question now from Matthias Dietrich. 
Um, good afternoon. What can we observe as result results from the second semester looking at the three first Gaia projects that were already delivered? Well, uh, what we'll see um, in the next quarters is that we'll have um, the capturing of this new turbo generator and the energy generator, which will lead to self-sufficiency in energy production in the uh, Santa Catarina site, which will impact the results. It won't be uh, a return that is in line with what we expected um, for this project initially, because the price of uh, energy varies, of course, according to demand, but initially, the prices of energy are lower. So we'll be capturing this, but it's gonna be less than what was expected initially for this uh, first moment. But this is um, a project that will change our whole uh, level of energy purchases for the next 50 years. So there are moments where energy will be at 300 reais and there's other moments where it's gonna be 60 or 50 reais. Um, so these variations are natural, but we should capture some kind of return in this project with the reduction of the cost of purchase for energy. And the second um, initiative will come from machine two where the consumption of machine two is gonna increase significantly and throughout the semester due to greater consumption of paper for pack for bags and the machine has been performing very well and so we should expect a better return on investments from this machine in the next months and then machine one which will be able to produce a bigger amount of paper and fiber so one of the main focuses on the gaia one project is increase in pulp production so with this of course we'll be able to produce even more papers with a fiber and in machine one and two. And this of course will lead to paper with greater added value and margins. And this of course depends a lot on the pace uh, in which we capture this return, which is gonna happen of course at certain moments um, in full. But at this first moment with a market that's less demanding and exports being a little more difficult, it may be more challenging to capture this immediately. But throughout the next year, we should be capturing almost all of this return, considering the improvement in the mix of the production of paper due to the increase in uh, pulp production. So Antonio Hizu uh, asked about if we could talk about the price of the scraps versus the price of uh, virgin fiber and their correlation. Well, the price of these scraps uh, has a dynamic that is very unique here in the Brazilian market. And what's happening in, with this price of the scraps is mainly a drop due to a lower demand in paper. And this has been requiring, we've been requiring less paper because you have uh, a situation with less exports and a market that's weaker uh, when it comes to demand overall but the market for scraps is structurally having a shift that is super important, which greater um, use of virgin fiber in the system with the machines for recycled paper that were um, terminated or shut down in the last few months. And these are machines that stopped with recycled paper and this should remain. So um, the more paper you have for virgin fiber in the system, the greater the offering of scraps is, and with this, the prices should be kept at lower levels. So structurally, um, we are not expecting this to uh, go up in the short term because there are a lot of paper with virgin fiber uh, being placed considering the new machines um, and also a reduction in the exports. And so any other aspects? Well, it's just about the correlation between the scraps and, well, actually the cost um, of the pulp is normally coming a little lower than the cost of the scraps at this moment. I wouldn't know how to tell you exactly about this. Do you, can you, can you uh, answer this one? Well, I would have to calculate this, yeah. And then there's another issue in Brazil, which is, uh, the use of virgin fiber for the container boiler for packaging paper. And 
in this case, you would use the corrugated cardboard boxes, which would reduce the demand for scraps, and this would impact the price of the more virgin fiber you have in the system. Um, and this, of course, uh, explains the phenomenon in the drop of the scrap uh, prices in Brazil. But of course, this is a market that is completely correlated with the market with virgin fiber, the worldwide uh, market for experts in paper. And at this moment, you have a super supply in craft liner paper uh, in the worldwide market due to a drop in demand. And this is where the market has been suffering a lot and they've been exporting more paper. So this uh, provides some challenges for the companies that uh, export craft line around the world. And this impacts the internal markets as well. So what we've seen in Brazil is a little bit about of what we've seen around the whole world in paper markets in the, U the US and Europe and even in China. So although Brazil does not import or export scraps, um, Brazil is impacted by the imports and exports of papers. Yeah, lower imports and exports of paper and more virgin fiber in the system. Now we don't have a, a channel for exporting uh, scraps. So this ba is basically nothing. And at this moment you have leftover of scraps in the world. So uh, the US and Europe and Japan um, all end up using these scraps and um, to Asia and other countries there. And they had re reduced economic activity, of course. So it's a worldwide phenomenon. Great, then you have a question from Stella Fonchis from Valar. And I would like to know if Irani is also assessing some potential acquisitions and if you've seen the assets at Peña. Well, we always look at possible acquisitions and assess these, but we always um, analyze the value generation for the overall company. So all of the possibilities that exist in the market and that are, not, that are shared with us, we assess um, very carefully. But as long as this, of course, generates um, effective value to our shareholders about um, participating in the payment process, this is confidential and, and that's it. Thank you, great. So Mario also uh, had a question here. After the conclusion of the Gaia platform, if there's any expectation for a new platform for expansion and optimization of the production. Well, um, the focus on the next cycle of investments is gonna be growth, of course, because the Gaia platform, um, these 10 projects and maybe some others that we may include um, are gonna be focused on improving our competitive advantage in the current platform of the company. And this is uh, the main aspect. And the next cycle will be focused on growth. But we are in this phase where we're conceiving this uh, initial phase uh, and the cycle. And as soon as we have the investments approved by the board, we'll be disclosing this to the market. Okay, perfect. So now we have Guilherme Costa asking about what the structure division is between the cost in real and dollar, if the drop in dollar would impact the revenue or the cost positively. The biggest impact is in the revenue because we have almost 15% of our revenue in exports. It's not uh, such a relevant impact because the percentage that we export is relatively low. But of course it does influence the prices and their pace in the internal market some way. So I think that's pretty much it. I don't know if you have any of the other points to add on. No, I think that's it. Our, our costs are all in reais. Yeah, the costs have some chemicals sometimes that are benefited, but our cost structure has very little connected to the dollar. Well, then we have Enzu asking about if we could talk about um, the priorities in the ALM, and if there's any priorities uh, with uh, the liability management prepayment. We have a debenture um, issued at ACD plus four and a half. So it's a, a pre-IPO debenture that was pretty expensive. And then now from the month of July, we have the possibility to prepay it. So we should probably be doing this in the next few months. We're just organizing things in-house to see if it makes sense to fundraise before or not. But 
um, we should be performing the liability management soon after. Then besides all of this, we have our cost structure that's very well organized with the emissions we performed. So we think our costs are very adequate considering the rating level that we have. So what we have to consider uh, on the next in the next few months. Then Xing also has a question here. Good afternoon. How are you looking at the issue with the uh, bird flu? How uh, much do you think this will impact the um, animal protein centers in South Catarina? Well, this is something that concerns us, obviously, because we already had the cancellation of exports to Japan. And it's a country that's important in the imports for uh, birds. And this, of course, um, if you have a more severe uh, sanitary issue, this can impact the business directly. So we have relevant sales and volumes um, in the animal protein factories in Santa Catarina for swine and um, poultry. But of course, our businesses will be impacted if there's an in increase in this problem. And we currently don't have any other problems. Well, thank you so much. I think we're on a very interesting journey. This quarter was more challenging, but we do have very positive expectations for the next quarters and the next year, considering the capturing of the projects in the Gaia platform and the improvements in performance with the overall company. So we've been improving We've been going through like an ongoing improvement process and the deviations that we had in some investments, of course, some things were kind of beyond our control due to COVID, but they were limited to Gaia 1, which was a super challenging project from an execution perspective. And here I want to register um, our capacity for management with Enhiki in this project. He did um, excellent work. It was very complex. There was a lot of different islands that were affected. And so you can imagine if you had to uh, add this project inside an existing factory that affects all of the areas in the factory. So you can imagine how complex it is, but we had great management of this process and we're super happy with the results of the Gaia platform so far and um, how, how we're ready to capture these in the next uh, investments. So um, I don't know if Ojiba has any add-ons. Uh, well, we had some other questions that appeared. Um, well, we have um, some time here. Uh, Sheen also talked about the volume with uh, poetry and, well, could this be um, 